couple quick housekeeping things. If you haven't yet, there's a sign-in sheet by the door. Uh, just make sure you sign in there. Uh, just lets us keep track of who's here and if you want more information and gives us a good count of how many people showed up. Um, so I think you all know why you're here. Um, we're talking about the possible trail routing for the multimodal trail going from Hartford through Wethersfield and you know along with Riverfront Recapture. Um, it's a really exciting project. It's really going to expand this trail and give a lot more people access to the riverfront and, and some good opportunities in Wethersfield as well. Um, so I'm going to hand it off right now to Mike from CROG and he just, uh, CROG being Capital Region Council of Governments, um, he's going to give a few updates on a few items and then we'll uh, get moving. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, so yeah, my name is uh, Mike Cipriano. I'm a transportation planner with uh, Cap Region Council of Governments. Uh, so we're an agency of 38 municipalities around Hartford. Um, you know, we extend out from Canyon over to Yukon and then from like the Mass Line down to Rocky Hill. Um, so yeah, just kind of want to give you guys um, an update. Um, we have an upcoming regional study. Um, it's called our um, Bike Pad Priority Network Plan. Um, we're going to be starting that probably in June. Um, that's going to be focusing on both on-road and off-road gaps um, in our regional network, our bike pad network. Um, you know, the, the site was intended uh, to really benefit both recreational and utility users. Uh, so whether you just want to kind of go for a ride or if you're going to work, uh, we kind of want to work with everybody on that. Um, you know, one thing we kind of want to focus on is you know, separated bike lanes, not necessarily a share or a bike lane. We want it to kind of be protected, um, as well as multi-use trails. Um, so yeah, so kind of like a time frame for us. Uh, we'll be interviewing consultants in June. Um, like I said, early September is kind of going to be our start point. Um, you know, once we kind of have a consultant on board, uh, this, this is going to have a lot of public outreach. Um, so we'll be working with the town, um, as well as the public. Um, so you're going to be hearing a lot from us. Um, the study itself is going to anticipate to take about 18 months. Um, so we're looking probably a winter of 24, 25 end date for that. Um, but yeah, just kind of want to get that on your radar. I'm um, looking forward to kind of work with all you guys. Thanks, Mike. All right, so to get into the you know, real reason why we're here, uh, just a couple quick notes, introductions. Um, I'm Justin LaFountain, the town planner here in Weathersfield. Um, we also have a couple of town staff people here. We have Kathy Bagley, Director of Parks and Recreation. We have Derek Greger, the town engineer. We have Vlada Shukova, the um, Capital Improvement Projects Manager. And we have Joya, where is she? Oh, in the back corner, yes. <laughs> Joya Zach, our Economic Development uh, Director. Um, so, oh, we also have the mayor and town manager, Fred Presley. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fred. I'll hear about that later. Um, so right now, just a quick introduction how we're going to go through this tonight. Um, we're going to have our consultants, VHB, go through a presentation with you guys. Um, then we're going to do some question and answer. And then we're going to sort of break out into some smaller groups. We have some maps. We have some discussion topics. And uh, we can go from there. Um, but right now, I want to hand it over to Mike from Riverfront Recapture. And he's just going to give a quick little introduction as well. Th thank you, Justin. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Mike Zaleski. I'm the CEO of Riverfront Recapture. We're a nonprofit organization whose mission is ra rather simple, connect people with the Connecticut River. And as part of our work, we're really excited about working with the town of Weathersfield and the city of Hartford to move this multimodal trail routing study forward, this Hartford to Weathersfield study that will look at a variety of different options to get from essentially Charter Oak Landing, our park in the South Meadows of the city, to Weathersfield, to Old Weathersfield, and hopefully beyond. Uh, you've all seen um, the last couple of weeks with the opening of pedestrian and bike connection across the, the Putnam Bridge and how that has resonated with the community. Uh, we think this has an additional opportunity to make additional connections. I say additional connections because if you're paying attention to some of the work that's happening along the Connecticut River, you're seeing as the years go by, additional connections continuing to be built. Uh, and that's thanks to st the state DOT, the individual municipalities, the Capital Region Council of Governments, institutions like Goodwin University and others, uh, Glastonbury, Town of East Hartford, etc. There's a lot of momentum happening here and we think this opportunity, Hartford to Weathersfield, has an additional, uh, is an additional way to make those connections. 
we are working on an additional uh, project that connects to Windsor. So as you go about thinking about this whole process, think about the, um, the opportunity to get on a bicycle in Old Weathersfield and make your way all the way up to Windsor Center and potentially beyond if you get on the Bissell Bridge, and potentially beyond if you get on the Putnam Bridge. There are lots of opportunities here. I will stress that this is a study. We're looking at options, and the consultants from VHB are, have been hard at work over the last couple of months working with um, their team and with the city and the town and Riverfront to, to provide some, some options. So I'm really excited about seeing, about seeing their work tonight. Uh, keep an open mind. Provide your input. You all come from a variety of different perspectives, um, and we're certainly interested in hearing what you have to say. But this is not the end of the work. This is our midway process. They'll talk about where we are in the process. Again, thank you for your input tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the, to the town of Leathersfield, Mayor Lesser. Thank you for your continued support of um, bike ped options within the town of Leathersfield. If you're interested in um, it's going to be the same presentation, but we're holding another public meeting in Hartford um, on May 30th, next week. Um, so if, if you have additional questions or you want to see the, the, um, the presentation again, that'll be at the Metzner Center. And of course, as always, never hesitate to reach out to me or Martha from Riverfront or any of the town staff with, with additional questions. So thanks. I'm going to introduce, um, we've got some great consultants. Um, from VHB, a local firm uh, based out of, uh, talking about neighbors to the river, uh, based out of um, um, the office, an office building that was right along, right adjacent to the pedestrian connection in the Putnam Bridge. So we're, we're thrilled to have VHB here today. I'm going to introduce Josh and Yanadi. Thanks, Mike. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Josh Yanadi. As Mike said, I'm with VHB. Um, I'm a transportation engineer. Uh, we work here in town, but I'm also a Weathersfield resident. Um, this is very exciting to me. Uh, we're real excited about the work that we've been doing and the information that we're going to present to you uh, this evening. So I'll pass it over to Dan to introduce himself and get started with the presentation. Great. Um, thanks, Josh. Uh, my name is Daniel Amstutz. I'm with VHB. I'm also working on this project with Josh and very excited to be here. Um, so I'm going to go over to the, the computer and get moving on this. So, all right, thank you everyone. Um, so we've gone through, I'm just going to go through briefly the meeting agenda. We've gone through the welcome and introductions. And so we're going to give, this is going to be uh, sort of a higher level overview of all the work that we've done over the last few months give an idea of the purpose and the over overview of it, which we've already heard a little bit about um, over the last few minutes. And we'll get into more detail on the different trail alignments. I know people have been around at the maps that are on the tables, which show all the trail alignments. So we're going to talk in more depth about those and kind of different potential routes that we're looking at uh, through this study and an evaluation process that we'll be, um, we will be doing as part of the study to look at sort of what's potentially going to be the best route. Because at the end of the study, we are going to provide a recommendation on, on what route would be the best for connecting these uh, two locations, the Charter Oak Landing to the Putnam Bridge, and then beyond, really, to uh, Rocky Hill and the ferry there is uh, sort of one of the, the ultimate goal. Um, <clears throat> so and then we'll talk a little bit about next steps, and then we'll have a good um, uh, period where we can have Q&A and after that then we can go on to the maps and you can um, you know we'll have people stationed at them where you can provide some information or input and tell us you know your thoughts about the different routes that we've just talked about so again this is a reiterate that this is a study we're really just sort of starting looking at where our um, how could you get from the top part of this map showing the Charter Oak Landing down to the Putnam Bridge Trail um, or, uh, yeah, the Putnam Bridge Trail connection that just opened just a couple of weeks ago that you can walk up there if you haven't been there. Uh, it's a really nice walk up to the bridge and then you can actually cross the bridge all the way over to Glastonbury. So we're looking at, you know, studying different potential options and recommending this trail route um, that could move forward, you know, to the next phase of, of the project. This is sponsored by uh, the Town of Weathersfield, City of Hartford, and Riverfront Recapture, so it is very much a collaborative effort for this, and it's funded by the Connecticut um, Deep Recreational Trails Grant, and there is a 20% match that comes with that, 80% paid by the state, 20% of the study paid by the town, the city, and Riverfront Recapture. So there is, um, there is a, a match involved with that. but. So, so everybody is, is you know, 
um, <clears throat> part of the study. The, as I mentioned, we're reviewing the different potential routes, which we'll go over and really try to determine what that preferred route is based on information we get from talking to uh, the Hartford Flood Commission and the DPW and uh, the public and our partners at Riverfront and the town and the city. Um, as we've heard about, this is part of sort of a bigger picture idea of creating this increasingly connected capital region where people can walk and bike more easily to places where they can get from one point to the next, they can cross the bridges, they can get to the other side of the river um, <clears throat> and really be able to have that multimodal connectivity between places. And we really want to incorporate your input, the input from the community as part of this, as part of our decision-making process to look and see, well, what route is going to be uh, the best one to focus on or, or what to look at when we look at recommendations. And then having the trail alignment be successful for leveraging those future funds, future grant funds that may come out there, you know, more recreational trails grants or other types of grants that may pose an opportunity for us to incorporate the trail within them. Uh, project schedule, so we did have a kickoff earlier this year. It's about a 12-month study process that we have here. Over the last few months, we have been gathering data. We've done field review. We've actually, um, one of the trail routes goes out uh, potentially along the, um, the levee or the Clark Dyke that's over by the Brainerd Airport. We've actually been out there and looked at it to sort of see what the issues are and the challenges with with putting a trail uh, over in that location. So we've done a, a number of uh, field walks and also collected uh, data around traffic and speeds and crashes and other pieces of data that would be helpful for, again, putting into our evaluation and making a, looking at a decision to make a recommendation. Um, and identifying, again, analyzing those alignments that we have for the next several months as well. So we've had, uh, there are two public meetings that we talked about, one here in, in the town, and then one will be in Hartford next week, which will present the same information. And we'll have another second set of public meetings like this in the September timeframe, where we'll have more information getting towards a sort of draft recommendation uh, that we would present at the, the end of the study. And then we'll finish up by the end of the year. So the potential route alignments here, again, we have the larger maps that are on the, the um, tables here that we can look at later on, but basically we're split between kind of on-road, different on-road and off-road routes. Um, it may be difficult to see, there are sort of blue lines in Hartford and pink lines in Weathersfield, and there's sort of multiple options. We split them into different segments so that we can understand, well, could we connect here? What if we went this way or that way? And we're, we're looking at d different potential alignments that we could look at. But for this, we're going to sort of focus on um, on-road versus off-road. There's basically 11 different segments that we've, we've identified as potential here um, within the city of Hartford. So the um, Charter Oak Landing is at the very top, and then sort of the town line with Weathersfield is at the bottom. And I'm just going to, uh, again, sort of provide a high level. Here's one of the root options that we're looking at is this would be really a completely on-road option from the Charter Oak Landing, and it would follow Weathersfield Avenue down through Hartford to the south, so it would come out of the Charter Oak Landing, uh, the entrance there on Reserve Road, and then come up underneath 91 along Wawarmi to the, I think, I think my cursor is there, I think you can see that, you'd come this way. And then at this point you could potentially go down Locust Street to Meadow Street to Weathersfield Ave, or follow Wawarmi to Weathersfield Ave, and then continue all the way south to the town line and where it, con er, where it um, turns into Silas Dean Highway and, and Hartford Avenue. Um, so that is a potential on-road route that we're looking at um, to try to get the trail through. And, you know, this has certain opportunities and challenges that come with it. You know, when it comes to putting a trail along a road, we'd be looking at more of a side path type of facility where it would be within the road right of way, but it would be along the side of the road. Um, this does have some good connections with Colt Park. Uh, off of a warning, you can see a, the picture at the top here is showing you there's a wide sort of grassy expanse there that's on the Colt Park side that could be utilized to create a trail. Uh, there are, uh, there's the high school that's getting reconstructed, there's a, a middle school along Weathersfield Avenue would create uh, good connections to those for, you know, children to have good safe routes to school. Um, 
and it could also provide great access to the residential neighborhoods that are west and around Weathersfield Avenue uh, and provide a direct connection really between that community and the waterfront, which is, isn't necessarily um, well established at this point. There are some challenges with this. It is far from the river. Um, you know, they hopefully, the idea is to hopefully get it closer to the river. Um, there would be conflicts with driveways and parking lots. And as you go down Weathersfield Avenue, there's, um, you know, a number of different conflicts such as that. And if you can't build in a whole trail, you could, you know, separate people with a bicycle lane. Uh, there is a separated bicycle lane that's on part of Weathersfield Ave at this time that could be potentially continued down further to the south. Um, that have a bike lane and then a sidewalk. And it is, of all the ones that we're looking at, all the different potential on-road routes, this has the most traffic. There's a pretty high crash density at, uh, I think, Airport Road and Weathersfield Avenue that would be a challenge. So, you know, that those are the things that we'd have to overcome. Um, the other on-road route that we're looking at as again, just sort of through the Hartford area, is sort of Reserve Road and Murphy Road. So coming out of Charter Oak uh, Landing and coming down Reserve Road, uh, this goes through more of an industrial area, but it follows Murphy Road south, and then it goes around it goes around the bend here where it comes to Brainerd Road at this intersection. And then there is um, sort of a public access way that goes around the MDC wastewater treatment facility. Um, and then there are actually some existing tunnels that are under I-91 and Route 5 that lead you over to the South Meadows pump station. Uh, from there, you can go through the floodgates and connect over to uh, Hartford Ave and Weathersfield. So this is a more direct on-road route than the Weathersfield Avenue. The, um, you know, there are these, we went through the tunnels when we also walked on the levee. Um, these sort of very unique tunnels that go underneath the roadways that uh, could potentially be utilized in order to get over to the Weathersfield Ave, Hartford Ave area. There are some businesses along Murphy Road that um, you could access. And Murphy Road, there are parts of it which seem a little bit wider where you could uh, possibly move in the curb in order to actually get a trail along there. But there are, you know, challenges with it being really more of an industrial area. Uh, there is, would be heavy truck traffic. There are very wide driveways of these businesses. They're more industrial oriented. Um, the Hartford uh, DPW uh, and MDC have, you know, raised concerns about security, uh, like around the pump station itself and concerns that, that uh, issues that they've had there that they have raised with us. Um, there is a, it is a very busy intersection at Murphy Road and Brainerd Road with people coming off the highway. Um, you know, there are some crashes there that have occurred in the past. And again, there isn't really access to the river. So these are some of the things that we're looking at as we're talking, uh, as we're looking at these different types of routes. And I'm gonna give it over to Josh, who's gonna talk about the levee and the sort of off-road route potential. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> All right, so as Dan mentioned, I'm going to focus a little bit on the off-road routes, um, starting up at Charter Oak Landing, which is up at the top of the screen. Um, so we're gonna focus on a couple of key areas, but really what we're looking at is a direct extension of the Hartford River Walk. Um, so a couple of areas that I wanna bring to your attention, um, that I'm gonna try pointing here with this laser, but that H7A label up top there, um, that's right about the location of the Materials Innovation Recycling Authority uh, Resource Recovery Plant. So that's an area that we'll talk a little bit about. Um, obviously the City of Hartford Flood Control Levy, what they refer to as the Clark Dyke, um, spans this entire portion. It runs parallel to the Connecticut River all the way down around Brainerd Airport, around the MDC plant um, that Dan was just talking about. And then I also want to draw your attention to um, there's a utility corridor here right near that label for H11. Uh, I-91 runs through this stretch, um, kind of parallel to what's labeled there, W-9. And then, of course, Route 5 comes across kind of spanning that W-1, H-10 label. So those are all things that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail here while we talk about the opportunities and challenges. So uh, some of the opportunities are obviously proximity to the river. Um, as Dan mentioned, we had an opportunity to walk this uh, over the last couple of weeks. And it's amazing when you're out there along the river. You're between the levee and the river. It's kind of like a nature walk, a lot of birds. It's real quiet. Um, you can faintly make out the I-91 traffic. Um, another opportunity is the existing access road. So in that stretch that runs parallel to the Connecticut River, kind of uh, south to north there, 
There's an existing gravel road, which as you can see in the picture on the top, it's a little overgrown, um, but it's a nice shelf on the toe of the, the levee on the river side there, which is a great opportunity for constructability. Um, at, on the kind of west to east portion that runs along the MDC plant, there's actually a paved road there uh, between I-91 and routes five and 15. Um, some of the challenges for this alignment, as I mentioned, that Myra plant, there's a photo of what the riverside of that plant looks like on the bottom right there. Um, we understand that there's a plan in place for that to eventually be dissolved, but as you can see in this picture, in the, the condition that it's in today, there's an existing flood wall on the left-hand side. There's a catwalk out there, a lot of existing equipment, some sheet piles, so that's a challenging area. Um, as we mentioned, we were just out there last week, so this is something that we're focused on now. We're going to be looking at some options uh, to span this area, um, but it's certainly a challenge and something that we're aware of and looking into. Uh, proximity to I-91, so I, I pointed that out on the previous slide. We've got to cross it somehow. Um, as Dan mentioned, in our coordination with uh, DPW flood up in Hartford and the Greater Hartford Flood Commission, they have their concerns with crossing the levee. Um, they have their, the Brainerd Airport has their concerns with being on top of the levee. Um, the FAA models for, for their approach actually run through the levee. So things that we need to be aware of. We're looking at potentially being on top. We're looking at options for crossing it. There are challenges that we can get into. Um, frankly, we can talk about these alignments and the levee specifically for a long time. We're trying to keep it brief. Um, but so for the, for the purposes of this discussion, we're focused on that outside toe. Um, so, uh, jump, whoops. so the proximity to 91 is a constraint. Um, permitting and environmental constraints. So in that picture uh, up top there, the stretch that runs south to north, um, it, it's right along the 100-year uh, floodplain. So maintenance concerns are something that we're thinking about. Seasonal closures are something that we're thinking about. Opportunities to pick up the trail to avoid those things are things that we're thinking about. Um, limited access and egress, this is about a two, uh, two and a half mile stretch around the airport and the MDC facility. Um, so something that we're aware of and, and reporting on and thinking about, as well as security. Um, so let me back up one more slide. So what we're looking at for this alignment is, as I mentioned, continuing down from Charter Oak Landing, running parallel. When we get to I-91, as I mentioned, we kind of looked at crossing the levee and utilizing those tunnels that Dan talked about a moment ago. But with the challenges crossing the levee, the grade constraints, uh, trying to maintain ADA accessibility. We, we recently started talking about an opportunity to potentially go underneath 91 with some sort of structure. Now, I can imagine there are people in here that are pretty surprised to hear me say that, but as, I've, as we've mentioned, to kick this thing off, it's a planning study, right? We're at the beginning phases. So this is something that we're looking at. It avoids those crossings. It avoids the South Meadows pump station and the concerns that DPW flood has. Um, it also allows us to stay on the outside toe and utilize that existing Eversource, uh, the old CLMP utility corridor as an opportunity to maybe run an elevated trail out to Hartford Avenue. Um, so with that, we're going to step down south into Weathersfield. Uh, we're going to look at a number of different alignments here, both on-road and off-road. Before I pass it back over to Dan to look at the on-road alignments, I want to point out a couple of things here. You'll see the, uh, the orange line that runs parallel to the Silestein Highway south to north there. Um, the town of Weathersfield has been in discussions with DOT about a potential rail width trail along that alignment. So not something that we're tremendously focused on as part of this effort, but we're obviously speaking with the town of Weathersfield about it. They're keeping us updated. It's something that we're, we're talking to, the connection opportunities there. Um, I also want to highlight the, what's highlighted in blue, kind of W3, the Main Street W6 alignment all the way around in this dashed blue line. You may recognize that's the temporary trail that was just put in place. Um, and the, the highlighted blue line starting from the Cove are projects that we'll go into a little bit more detail on, but upcoming real projects here in the town of Weathersfield that we're also looking at connections to. So with that, I'll pass it back over to Dan to talk about the on-road alignments in Weathersfield. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, so I just have a, a couple of slides on this. So 
Um, when it comes to the kind of on-road routes we're looking at in the town, um, there's, there's not very many that sort of make sense. Um, definitely going down Hartford Avenue, you know, that's, you can see that's sort of the main one that we have here that is coming from the kind of Weathersfield Ave, Silas Dean Highway, where it, where it branches off and comes down Hartford Avenue. Um, and then there's kind of three basic ideas. You know, the uh, Cove Park, and you come to Cove Park, and going through Cove Park, that would, of course, be off-road. Um, but that is, you know, it's a little bit out of direction. There's potentially State Street, which run, you know, in front of the DMV, would be another way that you could continue along the trail or continue on Hartford Ave as it goes further to the south and then finally connects up. All of these connect up to Main Street, which is sort of the, the goal. As um, Justin mentioned, there are some existing projects or, or upcoming projects that are going on on Main Street and then along Marsh Street that would take you down Marsh Street and around the bend and underneath I-91 and then come out on Great Meadow Road that takes you straight over to where the Putnam Bridge is and where that the temporary trail is now. And then again I'll mention there is a pink line that's sort of off to the off to the end here on the very left on the very right side that that would continue along through the Great Meadows and then go down further into Rocky Hill to the ferry would be again one of the, the, the goals further on. And so utilizing Hartford Avenue and, and Main Street, um, you know, there is, as I mentioned, the, the Cove Park and also Standish Park is there. It's a potential to try to take the trail more, again, more into an off-road section for, for part of it so it doesn't have to follow the road the entire way. So that's helpful to have those public areas there to have that opportunity. Um, there is, I think, uh, you know, really looking at sort of the economic development piece of this is having access to Main Street, Old Weathersfield, to the businesses, to the restaurants that are there, um, to bring people to that area by biking and walking so that they can see that and get through there as well. Um, and again, connecting to these existing projects that are already kind of underway, that is a really great opportunity to, you know, build part of this trail route already um, in the next few years. Uh, there are sections um, along the roads, such as on Hartford Ave, parts of Hartford Ave and State Street that are very wide rights of way. And so there are opportunities to say widen out a sidewalk so that it's wider um, and put, you know, put a more trail section along there or potentially make some changes to the road right of way so that you don't have as many property impacts in those cases. Um, and these are pretty low traffic streets. So they're probably, you know, lower traffic than a lot of the um, on-road routes that we're looking at in Hartford. Um, now, because there are a pretty wide right-of-way, there are utility conflicts and street trees that we would want to try to avoid um, in some of those very wide sections. So um, I think that those are an, you know, part of that where you've got the utility poles that are running right along the road as part of that right-of-way. So um, that would be a bit of a challenge. And then there's also, again, the access to the river part if we are going down the levee. Um, part of it um, in, the, in Hartford, you'd have part of the access to the river, but this particular location, of course, doesn't give you access to the river until you uh, get more towards Great Meadow Road. So I'm going to put it, give it back to Josh, and he's going to finish us out here. All right. <clears throat> so uh, the other off-road routes that we'll talk about in Weathersfield are highlighted there and, and shown in red. Um, Focus areas, the Weathersfield Cove Inlet, uh, the I-91 corridor, and Burbank Street, um, right there, right next to the I-91 label. Um, so opportunities, uh, similar to the, the, the last ones we discussed, this is a direct extension from the Hartford River Walk South. Uh, proximity to the river is obviously a huge opportunity. Um, some of the challenges, constructability is a real challenge. Uh, through here. These are alignments that have kind of been envisioned um, since this project was envisioned long ago. Um, so we've put a lot of thought into it. And um, as you can tell in the, the picture on the top right there, that's I-91 sitting up on top of that shelf. It's a very steep slope. It's about 40 feet high. Um, and so Dan and I went out there and walked at the, the um, elevation of the land that we're standing on there. Um, compared to where I-91 is, makes it a real challenge to run a trail through there. 
Um, the I-91 bridge is shown in the bottom left, and it's about 40 feet from the water elevation when we took that photo to the, the low core of the bridge. And so when we're looking at potentially crossing the Cove Inlet Channel there, we'd have to coordinate with the Coast Guard um, and, and evaluate you know, what the low cord of that structure would need to be. Now, if it had to be something like 40 feet uh, to maintain accessibility, we would have to extend the trail and pick up that grade over something like 800 feet, right? So this, is, this can get very expensive really quick when you're talking about an elevated structure that's up that high, but something that we're looking into as part of this study. Um, some other challenges, proximity to I-91. So um, I'm going to click back to the map because I'm a pointer. But the W-9 alignment that runs parallel to 91 kind of came up because we were thinking about those challenges closer to the river. And we were wondering if there was an opportunity to widen the I-91 bridge and potentially put the trail alongside it understanding that the user experience wouldn't be great. Um, we've looked at that with our structural engineers and it, it doesn't seem like a real viable option. Um, there would have to be significant strengthening of that bridge, et cetera. So it's, it's really better to assume this would have to be some sort of an independent structure. Um, with that bank along I-91, it's really a challenge to run the trail through that stretch anyway. We would have to look at some sort of a viaduct structure or, or something very expensive like that. Um, User experience being that close to I-91, obviously a concern. Uh, permitting and environmental constraints, again, we'll show a map here in a little bit that shows the 100-year and 500-year um, floodplain. So that's a challenge through here. Um, coordination with Army Corps. Maintenance would be a challenge as well. The picture on the lower right-hand corner is right on this outside bend of the Connecticut River. On the outside bend is where you have all the buildup of trees and debris that comes down the river. That's a real narrow stretch in there. So to run a trail through there would, could potentially become a maintenance issue for the town. Things that we're considering. Again, safety and emergency access, limited access and egress. Um, kind of takes the trail away from the work that's going on in town, but there's also an opportunity there. We run, run right by the Cove Inlet. There's an existing roadway that goes underneath I-91, so there is a potential connection there if we can bring the grade down to connect to the existing trail network or the, the network that the town of Weathersfield is building out. Uh, speaking of, so these are the current and upcoming projects that I mentioned. Uh, on the right is the Heritage Way bikeway map, which has been recently recognized as a Heritage Way Greenway. Um, and that's just to show you that we talked about the connections up north. We talked about the connections on the other side of the, the river there, the regional significance of this connection. It's also to show that there are other connections here in town extending to the other side of the Silas Dean Highway along Folly Brook, Brook Boulevard, etc. Um, on the left-hand side is that highlighted stretch of future projects, current and future projects. Um, you'll recognize in green, the, that's the Putnam Bridge Trail. We've got the temporary trail dashed out. Um, the current, the, there are two projects that are currently in design here in Weathersfield. Lots of projects, two different phases. And that's the stretch from the Putnam Bridge Trail underneath 91 along Marsh Street and Great Meadow Road to Main Street. Those are in design now. Um, and then the, the town is also pursuing lots of funds for the stretch along Main Street. That's what you see here as W6. Um, and then the Rec Trails funding, the, the same funding source that funded this study. The town pursued funding for the Cove Trail along W3 through Cove Park. That project is also coming and includes some improvements to the parking area there off of Hartford Avenue. So future connections, things that we're weighing as we look into our alignments. So to talk a little bit about our evaluation process, um, as we mentioned, public outreach is a huge part of it. So, so what we hear from you all, supportive comments, questions, those all go into the decision-making process for, for what alignments stand out here. So as we mentioned in the be beginning, please provide your feedback. Um, input from the Town of Weathersfield, City of Hartford, Riverfront Recapture, also part of that evaluation criteria. But we also have a matrix in the background that we can run all our, our alignments through. We have all of the alignments are NGIS. We can bring things like floodways and utilities and traffic counts, all of these things into GIS and run them through a matrix that spits out an output that really ranks them against each other. 
Um, so we've got 11 different categories, 45 different subcategories, ranging from permitting and environmental constraints to, as I mentioned, crashes, traffic impacts, et cetera. So this is part of our evaluation criteria. We're going to be running the alignments through all of this and we'll have more to report to you all when we come back in September, but we wanted to show um, how we're evaluating this in the background. And so these are a couple examples of what those maps look like. Uh, the, the colorful map on the left-hand side is a heat map um, that shows crashes. The, the warmer colors on the map are, are kind of the high crash activity locations. The cooler cover, colors are more low crash activities. And then on the right side, there's the 500-year and 100-year floodplain. Um, you could see there the, the challenges along some of those off-road alignments that we talked about and how the floodplains you know, extend into the town, et cetera. Um, so these are just two of the 11 or 12 maps that we have prepared that will be running that evaluation criteria through. So in terms of next steps, we've mentioned this. Uh, we've got the next meeting on the 30th at the Metzner Center. Same information will be prepared. In the fall, when we come back, we'll have two meetings, one in Weathersfield, one in Hartford. Um, we're going to take all the feedback that we received tonight and next week, and we'll digest that, review all the comments, bring it back to the study team. We'll be looking at that together. Uh, we'll complete the remaining field investigation. I'll be honest, we've already spent a lot of time in the field and looked at a lot of these alignments, but we'll go back out there and look at a couple more things, finish any desktop reviews that we have, um, and then run any potential alignments through that evaluation criteria. And then from there, we will develop the root recommendations um, and be ready for the next round of public meetings in September. And then, you know, as we mentioned in the beginning, this report, the report that comes out of this, this study, this, the town, Riverfront Recapture, the city of Hartford will have the opportunity to use this study to leverage more funding opportunities. The great thing about trail projects is that there's a great reimbursement rate. So this study, the Rec Trails program, is just one opportunity. 80% state funded, 20% match, right? It's a great reimbursement opportunity for the town and the town's money. Studies like this go a long way when they're trying to pursue grant money. So with that, I think we'll open it up to question and answer. Um, we'll pass the microphone around. Great. Thank you. Um, I think it would be helpful. I'll stand up, I guess. I think it would be helpful. Um, I know what it's like right now to ride a bike on surface roads. And I know what it's like to ride on the riverfront. And I know which one I prefer. But evaluating the different um, potential routes, it would be nice to know sort of what protected bike infrastructure is being contemplated. Yeah, I mean, I can, uh, we're looking at, I'd say we'll be looking at, so for example, on Weathersfield Avenue, there is a separated bike lane that was created, you know, further to the north or closer to Wawarmi Ave. But I think, you know, our initial thought is that you'd sort of continue that same or very similar excuse me, similar cross-section cross to the south. I think in general along the roads, we'd be trying to provide a separated facility that would be more like a side path that would be separated off of the road. Um, that would be the general, uh, unless we really don't have the space to do that. So I think, you know, that's part of the evaluation that we'd be looking at is saying, well, if you were to use this on-road route, what kinds of facility could you really provide? <clears throat> so for example, on um, as I mentioned, on Hartford Ave or State Street, you know, you do have a wide right-of-way area, but in order to get a trail in there, you know, you've got trees, you've got utilities that, that start to um, create challenges with doing that, whether you have to relocate them or, you know, you know whether do we don't want to cut down street trees, you know, those are the kinds of considerations we have to make when we're, we're looking at how to run it along the road. But in general, I think we would definitely want to have it separated as much as we could from the roadway. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you for putting this presentation together. This is Kevin Sullivan on the Bike Walk Weathers Field. Um, I don't know if I'm putting Mike or anyone at the front on the spot with a question like this. I, I'm assuming one of the long term big questions with something like this is going to be maintenance cost. Because uh, construction costs, if you're lucky enough to get an 80% grant, you maybe could neglect for conversational purposes. So under what conditions does Riverfront assume or contribute uh, maintenance coverage uh, 
uh, such that the town sort of doesn't need to worry about it. And I'm thinking of the difference in part, you know, is Riverfront uh, not amenable or not able to maintain, like if we go as far west as Wednesfield Avenue, versus something that, that's more literally around the riverfront. Maybe if you could speak to that at some point, that would be great. Thank you. Yes. So obviously the feasibility study is to determine the most appropriate use in a variety of different ways. And one of those factors would ultimately be maintenance. How do we maintain something like this long term? Because as you, those of you who know and use these types of trails, the worst thing that can happen is an unmaintained trail where you've got a tree that goes across it or there's a, a, a situation. So as we move forward, this feasibility study, which will be done in the fall, uh, at that point, additional discussion will take place. Uh, you're correct. If it, obviously, if, it, if the vast majority of this is a city street or a town street, it wouldn't necessarily be the purview of Riverfront Recapture. At the same time, we'd, we'd have to talk about um, how we go about funding the maintenance of a structure that goes along the river, because we, we currently manage three parks on the Hartford side and one park on the East Hartford side, and we come at that in a variety of different ways. We fund that in a variety of different ways. So I think that's the that's an interesting discussion that will have to take place as we go about this. We want to make sure that you know, we consider this to be not only a quality of life amenity, but a, a economic development tool. So there's ways to generate revenue through these sources, through with these multimodal systems. We just need to make the case for appropriate funding. But operating on an annual basis continues to be a you know something that that you have to keep in mind as you go about this process. And it's certainly a a, um, a bridge that we'll have to cross. I, I would just add that having Riverfront recapture the town of Wethersfield and the city of Hartford at the table during these discussions has been hugely helpful for things like that. Um, so that's something that we'll bring back to the table as we complete the study. Uh, I also want to mention, as Mike said in the beginning, we are at the very early stages here. I want to give credit where credit's due. The town and Riverfront recapture has been working on this for a long time, pursuing this funding. But we're still at, a, at the planning stage. So throughout design and um, ultimately into construction, we'll be able to expand on those conversations. Yes. Hi, I'm Allison Pfeffer, a resident of Wethersfield, and I currently work in Hartford at Connecticut Children's Hospital. Um, I commute by bike to work. Uh, it's five and a half miles from where I live on Mill Street, down at the south end of Wethersfield. And my route is on Franklin Ave, um, which has paint currently. Um, I much prefer Franklin Ave to Wethersfield Ave. Um, the traffic on Wethersfield Ave is very fast and can be very erratic. Um, I personally would love to have access to the river on my days off, um, but for me, I use my bike for commuting. I also use it to visit friends who live in Hartford, go to the Bushnell, the Wadsworth, etc. Um, so my question is, why wasn't Franklin Ave um, considered as a part of this uh, study? Um, so we're still looking at alignments. Franklin Ave is something that we can look closer at. Um, Definitely appreciate your comment. Uh, we will dig into that a little bit more um, and appreciate the background on you know you commuting north into Hartford and, and your use for a potential trail. So thank you. You guys are making me get my steps in. I love it. Yeah, hi, I'm Dalton Kruger. I'm a resident of Wethersfield um, and yeah, I am a cyclist around town mostly for recreational purposes, um, and I was curious, I know how we talked about the sort of town is considering this Rails with Trails project in Mothersfield. Uh, would you be consider continuing to sort of build an off-street uh, trail uh, on the railroad tracks that go through Hartford? Because uh, those tracks do kind of go up to the Charter Oak Landing and everything. I can talk to that a little bit. Yeah, so. Um, Generally, the rail with trail projects can be a challenge. Um, I know in that particular section, there are also some great challenges, big retaining walls. Um, we will dig into that a little bit more. Um, I know that, that typically they like to see like something like 15 feet from the center line of rail to a trail with, with separation, physical separation as well. So um, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, as I mentioned, I think there are some challenges for that stretch. Mike, you're... 
And I, and I would just say one of the things that I'll speak for River Farming Capture, and I, and I think the town of Weathersfield and the city of Hartford agree in the sense that we're looking to do something, hopefully do something in the short term. So while a project like a rail with trail might take an extended period of time to get the permits and the authorizations, part of this study is to figure out what we can do in the shorter term as opposed to five, ten years out. If there's, you know, the goal ultimately, at least our goal, would be to to come emerge from this study with something that can be implemented if properly funded within the next couple of years as opposed to a five or ten year time frame. Hi, I'm Rob O'Connor, I'm with Ellsworth Bike Walk Rosefield. Um, speaking of short term routes, that I'm, I'm curious about the pump station. Having used it before MDC started, the big dig or whatever you want to call it, and sometimes the gate was shut and sometimes the gate was open and sometimes I would walk my bike up and over the dike and pick the stickers off. But who, who exactly has, uh, my understanding is that's kind of a city of Hartford, like who has the key to that gate? Because in the short term, if that gate could be counted on being open, you kind of have the trail through the tunnels into the South Meadows or wherever that is and um, into the Charter Lane and I used to commute that way. So some, some, and somewhat that trail is there already, except for the, you know, depending on whether that's going to be open or not. Thank you. Yes, so it is uh, DPW Hartford that opens and closes that gate. Um, I know it's open for a lot of the weeks, um, or weekdays, I should say. Uh, that's where their maintenance activities happen. Um, so, um, th there is going to be a public access way that, around the MDC plant that's planned. Um, we've heard from DPW and Hartford, that's also the only access to the South Meadow pump station in the event of a major flood. So if the closure structures, closure structure five and the one that's just to the west are closed, that is the only access they have to the pump station. So utilizing that as a potential trail opportunity can be done, um, but it needs to be coordinated through DPW flood, the, the Greater Hartford Flood Commission, uh, and the Army Corps of Engineers. We've talked to them about it. It's a huge opportunity. It's great that they put that access way around the uh, MDC plant there. So it's definitely something that we're taking seriously. Um, I, I we'll also note they have concerns about vandalism and some other issues that they've had around the the pump station, but those are things that can be resolved. So um, we're, we're coordinating with them. Definitely appreciate the comment. We, it's funny, when Dan and I were out there, we were standing at the South Meadows pump station waiting for our escort to go up on the levee, and we saw a couple cyclists go by. And we were like, oh, they knew this gate was open. We, we didn't know this was open. We could have came out here on our own. Um, so I really appreciate that. It's, it's something that we're looking closely at. Sure. I don't you know. know. Like, um, complete streets, the law, or something like that, where they have to put up a certain amount of money to. I can't speak to that personally, Mike. Do you know? So the the question about is whether the MDC has ever been invested in um, creating trails. Yeah, especially around that area that they dug up and. Mm -hmm. you know. So. Well, let me first say that the MDC is very involved in public recreation. They obviously manage um, a significant reservoir system um, on the um, west side of, um, of the region, west side of Hartford, West Hartford, Avon, et cetera. And they also are a significant contributor to riverfront recapture and support our efforts to continue to connect people with the Connecticut River. That said, um, I, I, I've always found in the MDC willingness to um, promote public access and recreation, they're going to be protective of infrastructure. I know, you know, the, the fact that there's, they've committed, or at least the consortium is committed to some sort of access way is, is, is pretty great, uh, recognizing the infrastructure that they have in place in that South, South Meadows area. Yes, Martha. Uh, um, they committed, they actually, as part of the construction over there, it was part of the deal, essentially, with Hartford that they had to do that. So it was written into the permit that they had to create some kind of public access. So that will exist. The in and out of it, though, the access to the access is what is but I, I guess I, I would stress that we're ultimately trying to come up with the most efficient, effective, and cost-effective route 
that doesn't mean that there won't be other spurs like in a lot of, lot of trail systems have. Just wondering if, oh, Michael DeGrushy, so Weathersfield, the, um, is this intended to be a year-round or is it being planned as a year-round? Because for instance, when they went over the Putnam Bridge, they had to put it up the side to get at least 18 feet above the river, right? And that trail along, I mean, I was there three hours ago, um, the trail along the, 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 the river, um, as you had in your own photograph of the side of the bridge, those are the flood levels. Um, so, yeah, is, is the intent to be year-round? And the last part of that is, if it is year-round, and you come down by the river, um, you have to go past the outfalls. And the outfalls aren't a problem in summer, but in wintertime, the MDC doesn't bother to treat the effluent, so it can get really, really smelly. Thank you, appreciate your questions. Um, Oh, odor is part of our evaluation criteria. It's, um, it's one of the 45 subcategories. Um, um, but yes, the, the goal is for it to be uh, open year round. So actually, Riverfront Recapture does a phenomenal job of maintaining their parks, and they know exactly what elevation floods every year. They know exactly what elevation floods every five years. Um, we, we have the LIDAR data at the toe of the levee on the outside, that stretch that I was looking at. So we know exactly which ones based on their numbers would flood at what frequency. Of course, we'd love to be able to pick the grade up on the outside of the levee should the trail end up there, such that we can be outside of those flood elevations, um, at least so it wouldn't flood seasonally every year and have to be closed seasonally. Now that has permitting impacts, right? You'd have to provide compensatory storage because you're filling within, you know, the 100 year flood wind. Yes. There's an, there's an additional hazard if you come down along there, which is that entire area is flooded and I paddle through there. I actually went up through that area a couple of weeks ago to inspect where the, um, the airport has killed all the trees, um, illegally. Um, but it is like serious mosquito land in there. So yeah, you would have a, you'd have to do something about the mosquitoes as well. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Um, Tom Carson, I'm a re uh, resident of Weathersfield. Um, since riverfront recapture is involved, I always thought that this was meant to be a riverfront trail to the extent that it's feasible. And is that sort of what your charges as well, or is it just about making the most efficient connection between Charter Oak Landing and Weathersfield? Um, and I understand, you know, the cost is going to be a big thing, but are, are there certain things that are just impossible to overcome? Um, and are there any examples, especially along 91, that, that nationally or internationally, um, about what that would look like, like a bridge? or some sort of a connection to 91, so. Yes, so um, that, is, that is what we're charged with, is identifying the most practical and feasible cost. You could do anything with an infinite amount of money. So we are trying to be realistic with, with, um, with cost estimates. Things like potentially lateral boring underneath I-91, those are hard things to estimate costs for. They're also hard things to estimate, per, estimate permitting impacts and schedule and things like that. So we're trying to be realistic about it. Um, but um, yes, the, the, we are using cost data that we have for things like that, the bridge over the Cove Channel Inlet, um, the long stretches, um, the utility corridor that we talked about with Boardwalk. We have uh, unit prices and cost data up and down the East Coast that looks at what certain types of boardwalk would cost at, at different strengths for um, emergency vehicles, et cetera. So those are all things that were, oh, Mike. And, and I would say selfishly, of course, we would like the, the trail to go along the river. Um, but we also recognize, as a Weathersfield resident, um, I recognize the economic, economic impact of bringing a trail through Old Weathersfield and through Cove Park and bringing people to this core area. Uh, 
ultimately, as I said earlier, I, I'm interested in this study uh, reflecting the most, uh, the, 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 the best way to accomplish this in a shorter period of time. That may, that may mean that there be, there's a phase two or a phase three uh, that doesn't happen for five or 10 years, but ultimately I think there's a way to get from Charter Oak Landing, a riverfront park, to Old Weathersfield, essentially a, uh, a, um, a quasi riverfront downtown area um, without it necessarily going 100% along the river. I, I think, you know, impossible. I don't think there's anything that's impossible, but, you know, some of those, some of that I-91 turf is just, it's not going to, that's going to be, that's going to be five to seven years of permitting that we just, uh, it doesn't terribly, it doesn't interest me. Any other questions, comments? Thanks. Um, John DiBiase, resident of uh, Weathersfield, uh, a right for recreation. Uh, a little disappointed, I want to double down on what my neighbor said about Franklin Avenue. Uh, last Friday, I took some time off and I rode my bike along the Charter Oak Greenway, East Coast Greenway, came over the uh, Charter Oak Bridge. Uh, be fantastic to be along the river, but to be along the highway, I recommend you spend some time over along 84 and 384 and kind of factor that into your equations a little bit. Uh, you know, if it's a path of, you know, this is the only way we can do it, that's one thing. Uh, it's not really the most enjoyable ride, but if you got to do it, you can definitely get places. Uh, going back to Franklin Ave, uh, I guess my Concern, as I noticed on your map when you had it up there, there's a number of pieces of existing infrastructure. Like, if we're going to end up having to commit to the inland route, uh, felt like we missed a few things that maybe should be considered as part of, you know, how we're going to try and do these connections. We had a fantastic project that was recently uh, completed on Wilkin Hill Road. I think it was lots of which is a fantastic project and you know that appears to be slightly overlooked in trying to make a connection utilizing something that we just constructed and that we want people to use and it i don't want to say it doesn't go anywhere but you know it's a little limited like i hope to derek's in here somewhere that it gets extended further down wilkett hill road to kind of make it a little bit more enjoyable to kind of get through that north end of the street i live at the other end so you know i'm a little biased uh locust street uh, I took kind of a natural path when I was comfortable riding my bike down when I came off the Charter Oak Bridge and I found myself going down Warmy, came down Locust. Locust pretty much has bike lanes on it to begin with, which obviously physically separated off-road is preferred and the best, but if we're talking about cost and the ability to actually complete a route over a couple of miles between the two, you know, the start and end points, you know, if we can utilize and maybe make improvements to some of these other locations, that's better. I agree, Franklin Avenue, not awesome, but better than the alternative going a block back to the east, but it also somewhat ties into the better part of uh, Airport Road uh, as you kind of come down from Locust. So, you know, when I was riding, I was actually surprised. I actually never been up there before, and it turned out that, hey, there's this existing stuff, and it actually really wasn't that bad. The traffic wasn't that high. It was a better industrial area than hang around the other end of the airport road and um, you know the places north of uh, the interchange with Jennings which is I wouldn't recommend anybody riding over there so um, I just hope maybe we consider you know a few other alternate connections I think definitely having a connection to you know a number of the parks along the way uh, is great but um, you know do you really want to go way out of the way to build something and spend the money and then have to own and maintain it when maybe we can compromise and build the key pieces on the worst streets, you know, as best we can, and then tie in these existing pieces of infrastructure that we're already owning and maintaining. So, um, just like to think about that too. So, appreciate it. Thank you. And, and I would simply say, great comments for the consultants at VHB, but also comments that the city planning staff, uh, and as they continue their bike plan for the city. I mean, there's a, a significant. I. I be honest, I'm not sure whether Franklin Avenue is, con is included in their bike plan, but they do have a citywide bike plan that they are slowly implementing. Um, so certainly uh, we'll share those comments with planning at the city. Just really quick to piggyback off of both of those comments, I also ride uh, Wilka Hill and Franklin Ave 
every weekday uh, into Hartford. Um, and just the only point that you didn't mention, and this is for the town, I think, is that kids walk to five different schools on Walcott Hill Road every day. So, you know, making it safer for, for kids to walk and bike is important too. Yeah. Thank you. So I wanted to welcome everybody to the Franklin Avenue Riders Club meeting. <laughs> We didn't even know we were having one, uh, and I'm a member too. I, I've been uh, riding, <laughs> commuting daily to Hartford for quite a while. Um, I would, especially because Water Front's involved, and this is uh, starting anyway with DEP money for recreational trails. I hope that we are able to conclude, come to a conclusion of being as close to or at the river as possible. I, I as a Society, something, country, town, state, we have got to figure out better, uh, better use of our roads like Franklin Avenue, like Silverstein Highway, like Walking Hill Road. Um, we've got to slow down the traffic because, it's, uh, because the travel that goes along there sucks the wealth out of what's going on around on either side of the street. If we slow the traffic down, uh, the, some of the wealth can be developed back in, which is great for the towns and cities, and it creates the safety, an increased safety for the, the riders and walkers who, who've been asking for it. I don't think we all yet realize how badly we need that. So I hope we can somehow do that separately from this this project and not, well, let's go to Franklin Avenue because that needs a do-over and, oh, damn, we ran out of money for the river walk. Um, anyway, that's, that's what I'm thinking. We, uh, Strong Towns, uh, everybody go, if you haven't heard of Strong Towns, go look it up and uh, check it out. It's very much into this sort of thing. Uh, can we afford to build this stuff? Can we afford to maintain it? But we also desperately need it, so let's figure out a way. Thank you. Thank you. Talk about monopolizing the microphone. Um, something that Mike that you said, I think, when you're describing the curve, and it's, it's the it's the river. It is you know it's the quasi river. So my comment is just um, one of the things compliments of all of River Fabric Captures parks having ridden them and enjoyed them, and are what should be a part of our town, Cove Park, is kind of, I think it's lacking, and I'm just wondering whether Riverfront Recapture, as part of this, even looks at recapturing that as one of their own parks. I mean, the trail inside there is horrendous. And I know it was, I know it was an early bike piece in the town, I think it was a big bike piece, but right now it's, it's really a subpar danger, basically. Um, and then the connection that when you're coming down the trail toward to the, the, the barn and the parking lot, that piece that's, that is built out there, even if it's not connected to a riverfront trail, even if it was a cul-de-sac to the river, I think would open up, you know, it's going from a scary place when you cross under 91, if it was beautified and parkified for cyclists and walkers, they just walk out to the river. I mean, it's, when, you, when I take my bike out there, I'm like, oh, we're by the Connecticut River, even though the cove fakes you out, it is really part of the river. So it's part commentary and part encouragement that River Fire Recapture, I'd love to see it, you know, recapture that whole area, <laughs> because between the parking lot and the path and the people going down there, it, it really, if you go over to, to the riverfront park over in Glastonbury, you don't have to compare towns, but you see what, what happened with a facility like that, and you'd have, you know, you really take advantage of the location and drive all those people back down to the stores and shops and restaurants. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the Cove is a beautiful space. Yes, it, it could be so much more. Um, we, we've actually had a conversation with the mayor and the town manager about how we could be helpful, um, and I look forward to continuing that conversation, but ultimately, I think the town Recognize these, recognizes the important asset it has in the Weathersfield Cove, and, and the future is bright for that area uh, for a variety of different reasons, um, including this potential river walk and this, this uh, additional regional connection. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that, 
our mission is to connect people with the Connecticut River, and we'd love to see that stretch underneath the highway get improved. It's used a lot by walkers and fishermen and a variety of other different people. Um, it, it should be a better space. Any other questions, comments? None? One more. That area, wow, Ray Chupas, Wellsville resident. Um, that area north of the coal by the pumping station, that's always been kind of a no man's land. Uh, is there any thought of being given to uh, police patrols, stuff like by, by either Hartford or Wellsville? Yes, if it, so as part of looking at a trail through there, those safety and security concerns are, are absolutely part of it. Um, it is kind of a, a quiet commercial area, with a couple active yards in there. Um, so yes, that's absolutely part of it. Thank you. All right, any final questions or comments? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think this is short. Um, I wonder if the the uh, segments of the proposed route could easily be placed on as a layer on the town's GIS, uh, so folks could take a look at it. I, I mean, I would look at it a lot. I love I love maps, um, and I I like uh, the, like this gentleman said here about uh, different sets that we already have. I love looking to see uh, who owns property, mostly the town. Uh, to see what connections can be made. So it's, um, I don't know if, how much time the town actually even has to look at that sort of thing. So if we're able, as a group, uh, to kind of help along with comments, um, a GIS, GIS layer is a request if it's not too hard or expensive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will discuss that with the town. All the alignments are in GIS. Um, we have one of the maps, one of the 12 maps that we have highlights all the publicly owned parcels within the study area. So, um, you know, perhaps those layers could be turned on and off as well. We'll talk with the town about that. Um, one thing I did want to mention, the slide shows being recorded, it'll be posted. Uh, the slides will also be posted with the maps. Uh, as you've heard, there are other suggestions here for other alignments that we're going to be looking into. The idea wasn't to come and say these are all the alignments that are being looked at. The, the request for public feedback is genuine and authentic. So we're, these are going to be posted, but please don't think that these are the final alignments. Um, the alignments are subject to change. So uh, with that, any other final questions, comments, closing thoughts from, oh, one more. Uh, Bruce Kitson, I'm, I'm a resident in Wednesfield here. Um, the, you said something about the FAA at Brainerd. Uh, there's been talk about Brainerd being closed at some point. Um, that would change that situation as far as on top of the dike at, at Brainerd. And the other thing is, would you be able to possibly not have the trail down below the dike, but on down a little bit on one side of the dike instead of on top of it. That might alleviate your FAA concern, but would also keep you up above floodwaters more. Um, I could talk to that at a very high level. Uh, we are aware of the study at, at Brainerd Air. Whoops. We are uh, aware of the study at Brainerd Airport and, and the possible future there. Um, with, with regard to your second question, um, that would likely have to be on the inside of the dike if that were to happen due to, as we were talking about, filling in a floodplain. Um, that would look like benching in a fill section off of the levee um, with something like a 10 foot wide path with, you know, shoulders on either side that would have to be chased down. So um, as long as the airport's there with the grass runway, we'd have to think about the MDC plant. It's a great idea. Um, we're, we're looking at both sides of the levee. We're, we're looking at the crest of the levee. It's actually a lot narrower up there than I thought it was. Um, but thank you for your comment. Really appreciate it. Okay, anything else? Any other closing thoughts from any of the study team members? 
All right, so with that, we'll break. Uh, we'll stop the recording. We've got some map stage throughout the room. Um, you've heard from a lot of the team members here. Please grab us and give us any final comments that you have. And we look forward to hoping, hopefully seeing you either next week or in the fall. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.